Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of Tech Views Nope. And today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your OSX within VMware to OSX Yosemite, which is the newest version right now. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks within the um, OSX since it is in VMware and there is a little bit more restrictions. So before I get into this, I want to mention that I am assuming that you already have OSX on VMware. If you don't, then I have a video on how to do this. It's in detail and it is a pretty long video, but you really do need to watch it from start to end. A lot of the questions I'm getting on it has already been answered within the video itself. And I almost, almost like 99% of the time, don't answer those questions because you obviously just want to go to the description and then um, download what you need and go from there and assume that it's not working because it's my fault when in reality it's in the video or it's already been answered which is, is the case also because YouTube doesn't alert me on these these comments but anyways let's get back to this so if you if you don't have it I have a video on it the link will be below in the description and also I have an annotation up for a couple more seconds on it. So as far as everything else, uh, this is an educational video, just like the other one. And if, if there's any uh, thing in here um, that's th that you decide to mimic, or if you use this in any illegal or immoral way, then that's on your head. So that's also something to keep in mind. But as far as everything else goes, um, this is pretty simple. Actually updating your um, the OSX to OSX C70 is the same way as you do with a MacBook. Now the last thing I want to mention while I open this up is since this is going to be in a virtual machine, there is going to be lag. That I'm, just, I'm not going to deny it or just say it might be lag. There is going to be lag. So that's a huge thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm going to give you some optimization tips. That's mostly what I'm going to focus on since it's on a virtual machine. I'm assuming that you already know a lot of the features on Yosemite, but we'll get into some of the problems I faced when I upgraded and how I fixed it. It's, it's simple problems, easy stuff. And also some, some things actually were fixed over time that I'm able to do that weren't, wasn't before. So. Let's uh, jump on in. So first things first, to upgrade your stuff, it's pretty simple. Go down to the app store, or you can go to this Apple icon to the top left about this, and give it a second or two, software update. We're just gonna go directly to the app, app store. It will just uh, lead you to this. In fact, I can, let me show you. So there you go. Uh, once it's done checking, if uh, nothing's up, then then you might want to type in Yosemite or OBSX up in the search. And if that doesn't work, I'm not really sure what will. You obviously don't have the choice of calling Apple unless if you can divert whatever. But for the most part, um, yeah, that that's pretty much it. Uh, other than that, go into features and give it a second or two. And if you see something like this, then you can just click on that. And it should say download or install or whatever. And you can go from there. So, right here. so as far as that goes, uh, just go through that setup. And once you're done, you should see something similar, obviously, with your own background. Now, to get this particular background, you can go into the App Store and look up uh, Live Wallpaper. And, um, and this is the free version. So, once you're done with that, there's several things that you might want to check on. You need to go down to System Preferences and check on your iCloud and make sure that's hooked up if, it, if you want it. If it is hooked up, then great, but one of the problems I ran into was the uh, iCloud it accepted my username and password, but it wouldn't do the settings right 
so I had to restart the system and by the way when you restart the system for update or whatever it is don't restart it through this method you always restart so software updates through this uh, the icon to the top left and click restart simple as that and the reason for that is it has to do its own thing in the background and I would simply turn off and turn on is not going to solve the solution it, it's a software reset so as far as things goes once you did everything um, it, and that's not working to uh, another restart and uh, one thing I want to keep in mind is continuity you can't use that on here um, that would be under general and I think it'll be in this area I don't have an iPad so I can use it in the first place but from my understanding there's some bugs with it right now and uh, for those of you who don't know what continuity is it's basically where you're, if you're working on a document you can uh, work on the document and uh, or, or email and uh, do something clap your hands whatever ones I, I don't know what it is that you do but you do something and if you want to go from like a Mac to a iPhone or iPad the um, stuff will be transferred over there automatically and this uses your Wi-Fi so if you ever transfer your media from your computer to your TV over Wi-Fi it's the same way so you're probably gonna get a little bit of lag which is normal now one thing I want to mention with that is again there's some problems so you might want to keep that in mind so make sure that everything in general is like you want there might be some differences I can't remember but uh, this dock part I or the uh, top part uh, I will show you how to change that in a second um, there was a few things within here that were changed on its own between the updates so keep that in mind and that's right the uh, the black top menu it's right here just suck that and um, it'll switch it so it's simple as that uh, with a regular background or a lighter color background it doesn't look that good at, at all so that's something that you might want to check out for yourself it's a simple switch so it's not a big deal now one of the other areas that that um, I was affected that changed was the speech specifically the um, the text speech part I didn't really use the dictation part so it didn't matter but as far as the uh, speech goes um, I used the text speech for alerts uh, coming up uh, especially when I was building apps and um, and time and some other stuff it actually was pretty nice to actually hear the time every quarter well what I'm happening is the some of these settings were actually unchecked or um, or some of the stuff like the uh, time preferences that was messed with the um, and, and that's a pretty important thing to to get it to announce uh, basically you just make sure that this is selected but one of, one of the things I want to mention real quick is the voices if you downloaded any like this one then it should already be on here in fact I had downloaded any voice so that, that's pretty important uh, but uh, after the Yosemite update I didn't download anything obviously before I did so in other words that wouldn't be there so anyways uh, other than that I think that's about it. Now one thing I would advise is enabling the iCloud so if you do get a Mac again if you're actually doing something worthwhile it might be best to just use the actual device itself and the reason for that is simply the um, actual device you're not sharing memory you're not sharing processing power which if you're on an average day computer um, the average Joe that doesn't play games or if they do it's not heavy set games then you're probably going to run into some issues but if you're in a worthwhile computer then um, it, it depends on what what level you get to uh, but I've seen online where there is major major lag and I thought completely 
uh, frozen and I almost got to the point where I reset the entire system, the, the uh, virtual machine. Um, but um, it turned out it was just some major lag. It, now, now one thing to, to keep in mind is some of this lag is actually caused by Yosemite, but I, I, I doubt uh, a lot of it is. I, I think about 99% of it is because it's in a virtual machine. Now let's get into some optimization tips. So one of the first optimization tips and one of the things that you might notice is stuff. Stuff, uh, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, basically this folder is is um, just an example case. Basically if you put stuff on the desktop um, then you need to really put it in one folder. Not so much for um, after words. Like say for example if you put something on a desktop you need it right then and there then that's fine but if um, you're loading up your virtual machine you know it's slow but you got a lot of stuff on your desktop and even on regular computers in the same case if you got a lot of stuff on the desktop and you notice that starting up is slow that will actually speed it up by a, a little bit not much but it will help a little bit and every little bit adds up so keep that one in mind um, it, it for the most part you're not going to see like a 180 on an improvement though. Now uh, another thing is live wallpapers like this is fine if it's in a loop and it's, and it's in a small area. Uh, the only dynamic parts is the clock, the weather, and, and uh, the, the actual um, uh, analog clock. Sorry about that. Uh, but as far as everything else goes, since it's a, uh, a loop, it, it, it really isn't going to bog down the memory that much. Maybe a little bit when it starts up. So that, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, one of the biggest things I, I want to mention is if you don't need it, then don't use it. So for example, with the Dropbox stuff, I don't need it on, so I'm not using it. Obviously, I, I don't need to use any memory, even though it's on a different hard drive than the actual Windows. Um, believe it or not, what's on here is on a completely different, physical different hard drive than, than this. So that's pretty important. If you don't need it, then don't, don't you know, have it. But the um, reason why this is important because something like Dropbox, if it's constantly syncing and all that stuff, you might see that once in a while in some of my videos. But um, if, if you have it doing that, then it can slow down your internet massively. Because remember, you, your primary, so for me, Windows, it's also using the same stuff, the internet, the, the, the uh, same networking cards, the same processors the same RAM cards and everything so it's a huge thing that you gotta keep in mind and one of the last things I want to mention is there is a particular application which I highly advise is the uh, memory clean memory clean it um, basically what it does is it shows you how much of the memory is being used because keep in mind the memory um, I think I got 8 or 16 gigs of memory uh, wait, no, 7 gigs of memory um, allowed for this so basically I um, can clean the memory and allow it to you know keep up this might be good for just a regular Mac by the way because that that's um, a huge thing I notice is the memory keeps getting eaten up for some weird reason it doesn't clear itself like it should um but but as far as things goes it's just all i have to do is get this from the app store it's free and um whenever you're getting bogged down or notice something you can just press that button and start to clean it it takes a while though and the things that i've noticed that actually do work now is quite a few things on um, the hotspots. Now, 
One thing to keep in mind is um, some of the stuff you got enabled through the settings. I'm not going to go through all that. I'm, I figured that you probably know how to do that. But um, one of the biggest things that I like is the dashboard. Um, so let's go into that real quick. And as you see here, it's working now. And we're able to get back to the actual main area where before I think it was in um, in the recording for the how to put OS X Mavericks on a VMware that was an actual problem um, there was in fact quite a few things that were problems that aren't now however one of them that still is it's going to the uh, launch pad is the maps um, not necessarily that it will crash your system or anything like that basically um, maps um, and, and the find my Mac the, the application to find where your Mac is those and anything that, that wants to find the location by using their Mac uh, not browser wise but application wise those won't work so that's something to keep in mind the map, the map part won't work at all it basically gives you a a um a window and the map is uh one solid color so there really is no map so that, that's that's a bad thing other than that it's uh everything else works and it's, it's pretty good so anyways that's pretty much about it so if you got any questions feel free to leave them down below in the comment section and i'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible if i uh, this video has helped you then please like please subscribe and please share and if you do have any other tips uh, there's quite a few things I left out that um, Yosemite has problems with and a lot of people are fine workarounds and whatnot but um, if, if you do have any tips like that or any tips on how to get any better performance from the uh, virtual machine then um, then also leave that below in the comment section and um, and hopefully that helps me and everybody else. But again, if you like this, then please leave a like, please subscribe, and please share. And this has been Creek Bennett, the founder and owner of Tech Views and I hope you have a great day.